Hi everyone, in my previous video I talked about nuclear fission and nuclear fusion which are two extremely energetic nuclear reactions. And now in this video I want to elaborate a little bit about nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion is a nuclear reaction in which extremely tiny nuclei uh, under certain circumstances come together, fuse together to create relatively larger nuclei and it leads to the release of huge amounts of energy. Energy is released because when small nuclei combine together to create a relatively larger nucleus whose mass number is less than around 56, then it leads to the increase of binding energy per nucleon. It leads to the increase of stability. I have discussed in detail these things in my previous video. If you are interested, you can check that out where I have explained stability and binding energy in terms of the binding energy curve. Now, nuclear fusion uh, reactions are usually common in the core of stars. So this is the uh, only source of energy in stars or rather in our sun. This is the only way that energy is produced inside our sun. But uh, there are many different kinds of complicated nuclear fusion reactions which are possible. But out of them, two of them are quite common. One of them is known as proton-proton cycle. The other is known as carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle so in this video i want to talk about what is the proton proton cycle and what is the carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle the proton proton cycle is common in smaller stars like our sun or stars smaller than our sun while the carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle is common in stars which are much bigger compared to our sun so let's first talk about the proton proton cycle so in the proton proton cycle what happens is that uh, basically protons combine to create higher elements like alpha particle. So let's suppose at the core of our sun which is basically filled with huge amounts of hydrogen nuclei which are just protons then two proton which are hydrogen nuclei can come together to create uh, deuterium nuclei. So two proton which are hydrogen nuclei uh, they come together basically to create uh, deuterium in the process. So deuterium basically is a hydrogen isotope which contains one proton and a one neutron. Now this kind of a process is not something that happens easily. This, this you can see here these two protons they are positively charged. Protons are positively charged right. So they repel one another. There is a coulombic repulsion between them. So for two protons to overcome the coulombic repulsion between them uh, you need to place them in the presence of huge amounts of pressure and temperature which is available at the core of a sun. So the core of a sun when there is huge amounts of temperature and pressure, protons can overcome coulombic repulsion and fuse together to create this kind of a deuterium nucleus. So in the deuterium nucleus you have one proton and one neutron. So since two protons come together to create one proton and one neutron that means there is a beta decay process which has also taken place here. So beta decay uh, whenever a neutron gets converted to a proton or a proton gets converted to a, to a neutron you have a beta decay process happening. So in this process because a proton gets converted to a neutron uh, you have a positive beta decay process so you end up seeing the emission of uh, the anti-electron which is a positron and you end up also seeing the emission of a neutrino and you end up seeing the emission of energy in the form of gamma radiation all right so this is quite a simple reaction now this deuterium can again combine uh, with another proton all right if another proton which is a hydrogen nucleus can combine with this deuterium uh, to create uh, what is known as uh, alpha particle isotope he3 all right in this process energy is released in the form of gamma radiation so here you have one neutron two protons you have one proton so you end up getting two protons and to one neutron all right so this is quite a fairly simple reaction you have a similar kind of reaction happening alongside it here so uh, two protons uh, come come together to create uh, uh, deuterium all right in this process uh, you end up getting positive beta decay so positive beta decay means that you end up uh, uh, emitting uh, a positron and a neutrino and uh, gamma radiation this deuterium can uh, come together in the presence of another uh, proton to uh, create a alpha particle isotope 
all right and again you have gamma radiation coming out of it now these two processes create this he3 all right now these two he3 can basically also come together all right and lead to the creation of an alpha particle all right which is 3 sorry which is 4 2 h e however the mass number of alpha particle is 4 while the mass number of h e 3 is 3 and h e 3 is 3 so it's 3 plus 3 is 6 so in this process you end up seeing also the emission of two protons so thus you end up getting this cycle or this uh, 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 complicated sort of a chain you cannot say exactly chain reaction but the cycle of a reactions where two hydrogens combine together to form a deuterium this deuterium combines with the hydrogen nuclei to form a helium 3 and then again this helium 3 combines with another helium 3 to create an alpha particle this process uh, is known as a proton proton cycle all right so the net reaction that has happened here if you look at the net reaction you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 hydrogen uh, um, nuclei are absorbed while 2 of them are released. So basically 4 protons or hydrogen nuclei combine together to create this alpha particle all right, 4, 2, H, E and in the process lead to the release of 2 positrons, 2, E plus and 2 neutrinos all right and huge amounts of energy the energy can be calculated by looking at the mass difference between the final products and the initial reactants and it comes out to be around 27 mega electron volt so this kind of a reaction is most dominant at the core of our sun and stars which have similar sizes or masses compared to our sun another cycle is also seen in stars which are a little bit more massive uh, that is known as the carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle so in the carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle basically what happens is that uh, hydrogen comes together combines to create an alpha particle but carbon nitrogen and oxygen basically act as catalysts which uh, help in this kind of a cyclic reaction to take place so let me show you how that happens so what you have is you have let's suppose a carbon 12 all right which contains 12 nucleons out of which six of them are protons now this kind of a carbon 12 can combine with a, a proton or a, basically a hydrogen nuclei to create a nitrogen all right you can create nitrogen 13 right this will also see an emission of radiation in the form of gamma photon now this nitrogen 13 is unstable and it will undergo beta decay process all right then in that beta decay you again end up seeing the emission of a positron and the emission of a neutrino so basically a proton gets converted to a neutron so if a proton gets converted to a neutron you end up getting carbon 13 with six protons all right now this carbon 13 can again combine with a hydrogen nuclei to create nitrogen so this carbon 13 can again combine with a, a hydrogen uh, to create a this kind of a nitrogen 14 all right so as you can see here the mass number increases by one while the atomic number also increases by one this process is also accompanied by the emissions of some kind of a gamma photon now this nitrogen again can combine with uh, let's suppose another hydrogen and uh, it can also further transform this into an oxygen 15 all right an oxygen 15 contains eight protons and 15 nucleons this is also accompanied by the emission of some kind of a gamma photon as you can see the atomic number became eight from seven now this oxygen 15 is quite unstable and it will undergo a beta decay process all right if it undergoes beta decay process then uh, it leads to the emission of a positron e plus and a neutrino uh, 
not a gamma radiation but a neutrino here all right and maybe energy in the form of gamma radiation to finally become nitrogen 15 all right so you end up getting nitrogen 15 here because one proton got converted to a neutron this nitrogen 15 will now again combine with a hydrogen all right to create again what we started with carbon 12 because in this process you also see the emission of uh, an alpha particle all right you end up seeing the emission of an alpha particle here so if you look at this reaction 7 plus 1 equals 8 and 6 plus 2 equals 8 and mass number 15 plus 116 and 12 plus 416 so you end up getting this kind of a cycle which absorbs protons 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 at each step but you end up getting an alpha particle out of this whole cycle while uh, these carbons and nitrogens basically undergo transformations but they end up behaving like a catalyst they do not transform into something else they uh, the amount of ca carbon which goes into the cycle basically you end up getting the same amount coming out of it so this is known as a carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle uh, and carbon nitrogen and oxygen here uh, basically act as catalysts uh, in this kind of a process where hydrogen combines together to create alpha particle uh, so if you look at the net reaction here so in the net reaction you can see that one two three and four uh, hydrogen nuclei is combined together to create an alpha particle all right and in this process you emit two positrons and uh, two neutrinos and you emit energy out of this reaction uh, the energy comes out to be of the order of around 27 mega electron volt so these two reactions the proton proton cycle uh, and the uh, carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle are two common uh, nuclear fusion reactions that are seen in different stars now this is a little bit rare compared to the proton proton cycle this this carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle happens only at bigger stars why because as you can see here i told you initially that protons and protons require huge amounts of uh, temperatures and pressures to come together to overcome coulombic barrier uh, in this case in the carbon nitrogen oxygen case the coulombic barrier is even greater all right the carbon is a bigger nucleus it has a greater uh, positive charge so the coulombic barrier is even greater in this case so you require a, a bit more massive star and uh, even more greater temperatures and pressure for a proton to overcome that coulombic barrier to fuse with the carbon to create or initiate this kind of a process so these two cycles the cno cycle and the proton proton cycle are two very common nuclear fusion cycles which are uh, uh, possible in different kinds of uh, uh, stars that act as a source of energy in those stars. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much.